the woman who's now my wife. Can you grasp the gravity of this situation? There's no greater disrespect than sinking to such depths on your own wedding day. My fellow Redditors, I refuse to remain passive in the face of this betrayal. I consider myself fortunate to have uncovered the truth when I did. It was a perilously close call. I could have easily remained oblivious to the true nature of the incident. If I had been one of those blindly in love, I would have been utterly devastated. I'm thankful I didn't heed the misguided advice of friends who urged me to dismiss my suspicions about my partner. I reject the notion of blind trust in a partner, choosing instead to remain vigilant. I would rather end a relationship due to my partner's discomfort with my vigilance than to discover I've been deceived. Nothing compares to the crushing blow of learning that the man I hired to plan our wedding has been intimately involved with my wife. I've been unwittingly paying this man to spend time with the woman I intended to marry, though technically, I am already married to her, which only compounds the situation's gravity. The revelation of such deceit fills me with an overwhelming sense of fury. I can't help but question if my friends were aware of it, as they consistently dismissed my suspicions about my wife whenever I brought them up. They would advise me to overlook the signs and focus on the wedding preparations. Allow me to clarify something. I only began to notice signs of my wife's infidelity a day before our wedding. Why didn't I call off the wedding then? The truth is, while I observed signs, I couldn't be certain. I couldn't abruptly cancel an event with over 150 guests based on mere suspicions. This is where I hold both our families accountable. The pressure they imposed on us leading up to the wedding clouded our judgment, making it inconceivable to cancel all the plans we had meticulously arranged. Before I delve into my personal experience, let me provide some context about my relationship with my wife and how we first met. My name is Daniel, a 29-year-old man, and I'm married to Andrea, a 27-year-old woman. I met Andrea at a friend's wedding, a rather ironic twist given the circumstances. Let me share how I ended up leaving the wedding with Andrea. Things got a bit complicated at the wedding reception. The couple we were celebrating were known for their love of partying and having a good time, so naturally, their wedding had a wide array of drinks and shots. We indulged, and honestly, we nearly crossed our limits. While I can handle my alcohol quite well, I have no idea what they put in those drinks that day. I got drunk for the first time in my life, and I wasn't the only one. Everyone, including the couple, was inebriated. Andrea was among the revelers, and that's how we started talking. I don't even know what happened to my date that night or how I ended up in my apartment with Andrea the next morning. The realization hit me like a bucket of ice water. I had a one-night stand with Andrea. While one-night stands are not uncommon, it was a big deal for me, as I'm very selective about the people I interact with. The fact that I left my date and went home with Andrea was a testament to how intoxicated I must have been that night. My date never contacted me again after that day, leaving me single. Surprisingly, Andrea messaged me the day after she left my apartment in the morning. I was taken aback because I couldn't recall asking her for her phone number. So here's the truth, Andrea actually took my phone number from my phone that night. Yes, my wife was the one who initiated contact. I admired her confidence, and that's how our conversation began. We occasionally hooked up, but things quickly escalated, and we officially started dating. We were together for four years, but let me tell you, it was an on and off relationship. Our first two years weren't very stable. We'd break up and then reconcile, and the cycle continued. Strangely, it felt like she was my soulmate because we always found our way back to each other. We had a solid two-year relationship before we decided to tie the knot. I proposed, and she said yes. That's where our journey began. Honestly, wedding preparations can be quite the test of a couple's compatibility. If they can endure the stress of planning and family disagreements, it's a good sign they're committed. Our wedding preparations were quite hectic, to be honest. Our families were polar opposites in terms of preferences, which made planning a nightmare. Her family wanted a grand wedding, while mine preferred an intimate one. I had to assert that my wife and I had the final say in how our wedding would unfold. Eventually, Andrea and I settled on a wedding that wasn't too big or too small. We trimmed the guest list down to 150 people, finding a compromise. Let's delve into the heart of the matter, the involvement of the wedding planner with my wife. Traditionally, women tend to take the lead in wedding planning, striving for perfection and realizing their dreams. I didn't mind Andrea taking charge of the wedding preparations. In fact, the wedding turned out larger than I had originally wanted. 
Her family initially aimed for a guest list of 250 people. I have no idea how they knew that many folks. We managed to bring it down to 150 because I expressed discomfort with such a large gathering. My initial preference was just 90 guests. Having so many people only increased the workload, but Andrea insisted she could handle it. Although Andrea wanted something grander and more extravagant, she spent nights scrolling through screens searching for the perfect wedding theme. Initially, I tried to let her handle it independently, but eventually I decided to get involved not because I wanted to, but to support her and avoid overwhelming her. Despite my willingness to assist, Andrea assured me that she could manage on her own and didn't need help. I gave up trying because I had limited time to spare. Andrea selected the wedding planner, and I covered the expenses. That was our agreement. However, I never anticipated that this arrangement would lead to deception and infidelity, my fellow Redditors. The wedding planner happened to be a man. This surprised me because I was not accustomed to male wedding planners. I had always associated wedding planners with women, and this was a new experience for me. I didn't suspect infidelity just because he was a man. It was more about doubting his competence for the job. I questioned Andrea about her choice, and she assured me that he was an excellent wedding planner with a strong reputation in the industry. I didn't have much knowledge about wedding planners and their social presence, so I didn't dig deeper. His design proposals showed his confidence, and he even aced a test my sister prepared. I had no issues with hiring him as long as he was skilled at his job. I had confidence in myself and didn't feel threatened by having a male wedding planner. Little did I know that this wedding planner was engaging in an affair with Andrea. In hindsight, I find the whole situation quite ironic. This man was practically having an affair with Andrea, and I only discovered it on our wedding day. To be precise, I found out barely an hour after our wedding, and just before our reception. Let's delve into the details later. What truly bothers me is the fact that it's common for wedding planners and brides to spend a significant amount of time together. They need to choose a dress that complements the decor and find the perfect veil that doesn't clash with the color scheme. Their collaboration is essential to ensure the bride's satisfaction. As for the groom, it's mostly about selecting the right suit and tie with no involvement in lipstick colors or jewelry choices. Consequently, I had very limited interaction with the wedding planner during our wedding preparations. I took a leave from work, but I still had to attend Zoom meetings and manage work on my computer. Financially speaking, wedding expenses can be exorbitant, and nobody really cares about the total spent. They just want everything to be perfect. I was in a similar situation, needing to work because I understood that life continues after the wedding, and we would need to support ourselves. I don't consider myself overly strict, but I do value intentionality. I don't like idleness or beating around the bush. Therefore, I didn't hesitate to advise Andrea to be more mindful of her spending. She was splurging recklessly, and I couldn't overlook it. I cautioned her to cut back on unnecessary expenses. Andrea had taken an entire month off from work, which meant she wasn't receiving her regular salary. I had to make her realize that money isn't limitless. To be clear, I'm not a miserly person, and I'm willing to spend on my wife but I do believe in responsible financial management. I stand by what I said, and I don't see anything wrong with encouraging sensible spending, especially with money that isn't earned. For example, Andrea wanted our reception on a yacht. I wouldn't have minded if the guest list was under 50 people, but accommodating 150 guests on a yacht was excessively costly. I firmly insisted on having the wedding reception at a hotel, leaving no room for debate. Andrea's reaction to my decision was unexpected. Her behavior took a turn for the worse, becoming incredibly spoiled and disruptive. Just two weeks before our wedding, Andrea's attitude became rude and rebellious, prompting me to express my anger and warn her that I might end the relationship if she didn't change her ways. She became fearful and apologized, and I believe she would keep her word. However, she did so in a deceitful manner. Even though Andrea's overreactions and attitude subsided, I still confided in my friends about her behavior expressing my dissatisfaction and explaining my concerns. If she had exhibited such behavior before we began planning the wedding, I would have made a decision without consulting anyone. However, I gave her the benefit of the doubt because I understood the stress associated with wedding planning. I was experiencing stress myself and recognized how the pressure to excel and create a perfect event could temporarily alter one's personality. My friends dismissed my worries attributing them to the normal crankiness that women may experience during wedding preparations. They shared their own similar experiences, 
and reassured me not to be overly concerned. Little did I know that my own experience would be marred by a cheating scandal. Another reason I didn't confront Andrea more aggressively was that I felt guilty for leaving most of the planning to her. I made numerous attempts to lend a hand, yet she brushed off my offers, insisting that she could manage on her own. Her rejection of my ideas and assistance left me feeling disheartened, leading me to relinquish control and allow her to take charge of the wedding arrangements. As the wedding day drew closer, Andrea reverted to her usual self, her demeanor softening, and her receptiveness to my input increasing. I didn't find this change surprising, attributing it to the waning stress of wedding preparations. I ceased my inquiries into her affairs, choosing to trust her implicitly. However, two days before our wedding, my assumptions were shattered. We had settled into our hotel room for the night when Andrea received a sudden phone call, prompting her to hastily depart the room to answer it. The deviation from our usual practice of answering calls together raised my suspicions, igniting a mix of anger and irritation within me. Without a second thought, I followed her, driven by the need to address the seriousness of the situation. Discovering her in the hallway engaged in a hushed conversation on the phone, I felt a surge of frustration. Attempting to seize the phone from her grasp, she abruptly ended the call, prompting me to question her actions. Her flimsy explanation, citing fatigue and the urgency of the call, failed to assuage my doubts. I remained steadfast in my pursuit of the truth, challenging her vague responses and expressing my skepticism. In the midst of our confrontation, Andrea insisted that the call pertained to a relative seeking directions to the hotel. However, her explanation fell short, ringing hollow in the face of my growing suspicion. Even her attempt to present evidence in the form of the call log, labeled as Aunt, failed to dispel my doubts. Little did I know, this seemingly innocuous call would serve as the catalyst for unraveling a web of deceit. In retrospect, I realized the extent of my naivety and the gravity of the situation I found myself in. Despite my vigilance, I had been blindsided by deceit, my trust betrayed by the one person I held dearest. It was a sobering realization, highlighting the unpredictable nature of human relationships and the precariousness of trust. Yet amidst the turmoil of uncertainty, I remained steadfast in my pursuit of truth, determined to navigate the maze of deception and emerge with clarity. Lost in the labyrinthine maze of wedding preparations, my mind became ensnared in a tangled web of uncertainty and apprehension. The impending nuptials cast a looming shadow over my consciousness, punctuated by the presence of esteemed guests, including co-workers, distant relatives, and even my boss, who had gathered to witness the union of Andrea and me. However, amidst the orchestrated symphony of wedding arrangements, a disquieting discord emerged a disconcerting absence that gnawed at the edges of my consciousness. Andrea, my soon-to-be bride, was conspicuously missing from the whirlwind of activity that engulfed our surroundings. Her inexplicable disappearance, shrouded in the pretext of last-minute wedding preparations, cast a pall of suspicion over the otherwise joyous occasion. Questions swirled in the recesses of my mind, like leaves caught in a tempestuous wind. Why had Andrea ventured out alone, accompanied only by the wedding planner, without so much as a whisper of her intentions? The air crackled with an unspoken tension, as the weight of her absence bore down upon me with each passing moment, as the hours dwindled and the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a crimson glow over the horizon, my unease burgeoned into a tempest of emotions. Frustration mingled with indignation as I grappled with the unsettling realization that my voice had been silenced in the orchestration of our wedding day. Yet, amidst the turmoil of uncertainty, a steadfast resolve took root within me, a determination to confront the shadowy specter of doubt that loomed over our union. With each passing moment, my conviction solidified, spurred on by the unwavering belief that truth, no matter how elusive, must be unearthed. In the hushed stillness of the evening, as the world slumbered beneath a blanket of stars, I found myself standing at the precipice of revelation. The truth, like a beacon of light in the darkness, beckoned me forth, urging me to pierce the veil of deception that clouded my vision. And so, with a heart heavy with trepidation and resolve burning bright within me, I embarked on a journey, a journey to uncover the secrets that lay hidden beneath the surface of our seemingly idyllic union. Little did I know that the path I tread would lead me to the precipice of betrayal, where the echoes of deceit reverberated through the corridors of my mind. As the night unfolded, cloaked in a shroud of uncertainty, I braced myself for the inevitable reckoning that awaited me a reckoning that would forever alter the course of my destiny. For in the crucible of adversity, 
amidst the crucible of betrayal, I would emerge anew a phoenix rising from the ashes, reborn with a newfound resilience and clarity of purpose. And celebrating our union with our loved ones, we proceeded to the reception venue. The atmosphere was electric with joy and anticipation as we entered the elegantly adorned hall, where tables were adorned with exquisite floral arrangements and soft candlelight danced across the room. As the festivities commenced, I found myself swept up in the whirlwind of laughter and camaraderie, basking in the warmth of our guests' well wishes. Yet, amidst the jubilation, a niggling sense of unease lingered at the edge of my consciousness, a faint whisper of doubt that refused to be silenced. It was during a lull in the festivities that I noticed Andre engaged in an animated conversation with our wedding planner. Their heads were bent close together, their laughter mingling with the strains of music that filled the air. At first, I thought nothing of it, dismissing it as a moment of camaraderie amidst the chaos of the celebration. However, as the evening wore on, I couldn't shake the feeling of disquiet that gnawed at the corners of my mind. There was an intimacy in their interactions that seemed out of place, a familiarity that belied the professional relationship between a bride and her wedding planner. Determined to assuage my growing apprehension, I discreetly observed their interactions from afar, my senses attuned to the subtle nuances of their body language. What I witnessed sent a chill coursing through my veins, a fleeting touch, a shared glance laden with unspoken meaning. It was then that the pieces of the puzzle began to fall into place, forming a damning tableau of betrayal before my very eyes. My heart clenched with anguish as I realized the true nature of their relationship, a clandestine affair that had unfolded beneath the guise of wedding preparations. In that moment of clarity, the world seemed to tilt on its axis, casting me into a maelstrom of disbelief and despair. I felt as though the ground had been yanked from beneath my feet, leaving me adrift in a sea of uncertainty. Yet, amidst the tumult of emotions, a steely resolve ignited within me a determination to confront the truth head-on, no matter how painful it may be. With each step forward, I steeled myself for the reckoning that awaited, knowing that the path to healing could only begin with the unmasking of deceit. And so, with a heavy heart and a resolve as unyielding as tempered steel, I embarked on a journey a journey to uncover the truth and reclaim the shattered fragments of my shattered heart. For in the crucible of adversity, amidst the ashes of betrayal, I would rise, phoenix-like, reborn from the ashes of my own anguish. As I stood frozen in the doorway, my eyes struggled to comprehend the scene unfolding before me. There she was, my beloved Andrea, draped in her wedding gown, entangled with the wedding planner of all people whom I had trusted implicitly to orchestrate the most significant day of our lives. It was a tableau of betrayal etched into my memory with searing clarity, a scene that shattered the very foundation of trust upon which our relationship had been built. In that harrowing moment, time seemed to slow to a crawl as a whirlwind of emotions swept through me. Anguish, disbelief, and a profound sense of betrayal coalesced into a maelstrom of torment, threatening to consume me whole. My mind raced grappling with the enormity of what I was witnessing my wife, the woman I had vowed to love and cherish, engaged in an act of infidelity on our wedding day. The gravity of the situation was crushing, weighing heavily upon my shoulders like a burden too great to bear. How could this be happening? How could the woman I loved, the person I had entrusted with my heart, betray me in such a callous manner? Questions clamored for answers, but there were none to be found in the chaos of that moment. As Andrea's pleading gaze met mine, I felt a surge of raw emotion coursing through me a potent mixture of anger, heartbreak, and disbelief. Every fiber of my being cried out for justice, for retribution against those who had so callously shattered the sanctity of our union. Yet, amidst the tumult of my emotions, a steely resolve began to take root a quiet determination to confront the painful truth head-on and emerge from the wreckage stronger than before. With a heavy heart and a soul weighed down by the enormity of betrayal, I turned away from the scene, my mind awash with a tumult of conflicting emotions. Anger seethed beneath the surface, mingling with profound sorrow and a sense of profound loss. The future stretched out before me, uncertain and fraught with challenges, but I knew that I could not remain mired in the pain of the past. In that moment of reckoning, I made a silent vow to myself to reclaim my dignity, my self-worth, and my sense of purpose. For in the crucible of adversity, amidst the ruins of shattered dreams, I would forge a new path, a path guided by resilience, integrity, and the unwavering belief that, despite the darkness that surrounds us, there is always a glimmer of hope on the horizon. And so, with a heavy heart and a determined spirit, I embarked on the arduous journey of rebuilding my life from the ashes of betrayal.
Though the scars of betrayal may never fully heal, I refuse to be defined by the actions of others. For I am more than the sum of my pain, I am a survivor, a warrior, and I will emerge from this crucible stronger, wiser, and more resilient than ever before. When I unleashed my fury upon them, with a swift kick to the wedding planner's groin, I made my message crystal clear, I would not tolerate such betrayal on what should have been the happiest day of my life. Andrea's pleas and excuses fell on deaf ears as I summoned my elder brother, who arrived in disbelief at the scene unfolding before him. As the gravity of the situation sunk in, I felt a surge of disgust and betrayal coursing through my veins. The pieces of the puzzle fell into place the mysterious phone call, Andrea's unexplained absence, the clandestine rendezvous with the wedding planner all leading to this devastating revelation. My once beloved wife and the wedding planner, entwined in a web of deceit and infidelity, had shattered the very foundation of trust upon which our marriage was built. In that moment of searing anguish, I knew that I could not simply stand by and let them off the hook. No, I needed to make them understand the magnitude of their betrayal, to feel the weight of their actions bearing down upon them. With a steely resolve, I devised a plan to exact my revenge, to ensure that they would never forget the consequences of their actions. Guided by a burning desire for justice, I instructed my brother to detain the wedding planner while I confronted Andrea. With grim determination, we escorted them from the room, their protests falling on deaf ears. The extensive guest list that Andrea had insisted upon proved to be her downfall as we led them through the reception hall, filled with curious onlookers. Despite their pleas for leniency, I remained resolute in my decision to expose them for the deceitful traitors they were. The wedding planner's futile attempts to regain his dignity only fueled my determination to strip them of their pride, to lay bare the extent of their treachery for all to see. In the end, my actions spoke louder than words as I stood before our guests, a betrayed groom confronting the perpetrators of his shattered dreams. Though the pain of that moment would linger long after the festivities had ended, I took solace in the knowledge that I had refused to be a victim of their deception, that I had reclaimed my dignity in the face of unspeakable betrayal. As my friends and I emerged from the room, I was met with the bewildered expressions of our guests, who had begun to grow impatient with our prolonged absence. Ignoring their inquiries, I motioned for my friends to escort the wedding planner to the reception hall, while I led Andrea, her tear-streaked face a stark contrast to the chaos unfolding around us. Despite her desperate pleas for forgiveness, I remained unmoved, regarding her with disdain as she stumbled alongside me, a mere shadow of the woman I thought I knew. Her disheveled appearance and frantic apologies fell on deaf ears. She had brought this upon herself, and I had no intention of sparing her from the consequences of her actions. As we entered the reception hall, the atmosphere shifted palpably, the once celebratory mood giving way to stunned silence as our guests beheld the spectacle before them. Andrea's family rushed to her side, their expressions a mixture of shock and concern, but their attempts to shield her from scrutiny fell on deaf ears. Pushing Andrea onto the stage alongside the wedding planner, I felt a surge of righteous anger coursing through me, drowning out the frantic protests of my parents and the bewildered murmurs of the guests. Snatching the microphone from the MC, I wasted no time in exposing the truth to all who had gathered, recounting the sordid details of what I had just discovered in Andrea's hotel room. The gasps of disbelief that echoed throughout the hall were drowned out by the sound of clicking cameras and murmured conversations as guests reached for their phones to document the unfolding drama. In that moment, I felt a sense of vindication wash over me as the truth was laid bare for all to see, a testament to the power of transparency and accountability in the face of betrayal. As I continued to address the stunned audience, I delved into the unsettling realization that Andrea's affair with the wedding planner likely extended far beyond what I had just uncovered. Some individuals had the audacity to suggest that I should have intervened to prevent her from hiring him in the first place, but I dismissed their accusations with contempt. Blaming me for Andrea's betrayal was nothing short of cowardice. One cannot control the actions of a determined cheater, and attempting to do so would be futile. In a feeble attempt to shift the blame, Andrea brought up a minor incident from our past when I had gone on a date with another woman. I swiftly debunked her accusation clarifying that I was not in a committed relationship with the woman in question. She was merely my date for the wedding, and we were still in the early stages of getting to know each other. Andrea's stunned silence in response to my rebuttal spoke volumes, and in that moment, I knew that our relationship was irreparably damaged. Without another word, I left the reception hall, accompanied by my brother, 
determined to sever all ties with Andrea once and for all. Thankfully, I had not yet paid the remaining balance to the wedding planner for his services, and I had no intention of doing so. Instead, I made my way to Andrea's hotel room and gathered all the items she had purchased for the reception, including her designer dresses, jewelry, shoes, bags, and purse. I sold everything shortly thereafter, recouping my losses and reclaiming some semblance of control over the situation. As I reflect on the events of that tumultuous day, I am filled with a sense of relief and liberation. By filing for divorce immediately after the wedding, I took decisive action to extricate myself from a toxic and deceitful marriage. In a matter of days, I will be legally single once more, free from the shackles of a relationship marred by betrayal and dishonesty. Thank you for taking the time to read about my harrowing ordeal. While my wedding may have been a nightmarish experience, I am grateful for the opportunity to share my story and shed light on the importance of recognizing and addressing red flags in relationships. Through adversity, I have emerged stronger and more resilient, ready to embrace the future with renewed optimism and determination.